Right now, in terms of the future of money, and in terms of the future for the world economic system, it seems like the messaging that's coming from the mainstream media, the elites who gather at the World Economic Forum, central banks around the world, and so on, it seems to be that digital currencies will eventually replace the cash in our pockets. And of course, despite this being painted as a great convenience to the average person, well, in reality, having everyone on a central bank digital currency would allow the federal government to control our lives like never before. In theory, governments can make the money that they give to us expire so that we have to use it before a certain date. They can make the money unusable in certain industries. So for instance, you would not be able to buy a gun. And also, if the technology develops further, they would be able to tie the digital money in your quote unquote pocket to some other type of profile that you have in their system, sort of like what China does with their social credit score. However, as great as all that sounds, the truth is that despite the fact that digital currencies are being discussed and touted on the front end as the future of money, behind the scenes, on the back end, central banks around the world are buying up physical gold, physical gold and bullion at record rates like never before. According to the most recent data, which just for your reference always lags behind by a few months, well, central banks were once again net buyers of gold in the month of May. For instance, Poland and China each bought up 16 tons of gold. Singapore bought up four tons, Russia, three tons, India, the Czech Republic, Iraq, and Kyrgyzstan, two tons each. And just as a fun aside, ever since they restarted releasing their reports of their gold purchases, which happened about eight months ago, the Central Bank of China has added at least 144 tons to their official gold holdings, which now sit at approximately 2,000 tons. Although like with anything else, Chinese official numbers are always unreliable, but that's at least what they officially are. Regardless, as the US dollar's place in the global economy gets weaker and weaker, and as more countries are ditching the US dollar for other methods of payment, well, there are some countries which are actually working to create a new world currency that's backed by gold. In fact, the BRICS nations will be having a meeting next month in August down in uh, South Africa where they will be discussing exactly that. Now, of course, whether that will wind up happening and coming to fruition is still up in the air. It's not exactly clear, but the reality is that behind the scenes, regardless of what they say, major players are accumulating gold for whatever they believe will come in the near future. And so along that line, I took the opportunity to speak with Mr. Max Baker, who is the president of American Hartford Gold, who is for one, one of America's largest gold bullion dealers by volume. They're my personal gold dealer. And also for full transparency, they've been a sponsor of this program for a while now, and we appreciate them for that. And I spoke with Max about what the gold market looks like right now, what effect these giant players like these central banks are having on the price of gold, as well as what, in, at least in his opinion, the near-term future for the market might look like. And so consider smashing those like and subscribe buttons and take a listen. So a lot of central banks are once again stockpiling gold. The recent numbers came out uh, showing that central banks across the world in uh, Europe, Asia, Africa, uh, Oceania, they're all stockpiling gold. Why do you think that is? You know, central banks buy gold for the same reason, same reason the average retail investor buys gold. Uh, they're buying it as a hedge against fiat currency. You know, we're devaluing currency left and right by printing a ton of it. Uh, so re uh, central banks are, are following suit with retail investors. Retail investors are following suit with the central banks. Follow what central banks are doing. They're, they're the first to know. And central banks see all the, the money we've printed uh, over the past three, four years. We've printed a ton of money. They're seeing that. They're seeing that we're heading towards a recession because banks aren't lending. Credit conditions are tightening rapidly. And because of that, they're stockpiling gold because they know what's coming. Mm. So when that happens, when you have big players like central bankers buying up gold by the ton, uh, what does that do to the price of, of gold? Does that increase, increase <clears throat> pressure for it to come up? You know, what it does is it helps gold maintain its price like basically a support level. Uh, you won't really see gold move up 50, 100 to $300 at a time until the dollar pulls back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we saw that in 2008 when the dollar fell to, you know, uh, 70 on the, on the index there, fell from 90 down to 70. And we head into another recession this fall, this winter, you'll see that again. You'll see the dollar fall and that's when you'll see gold really rise. But when central banks buy, it offers tremendous support. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing I've always wondered is when you have um, 
central banks like like for instance the central bank of china recently uh, put out their numbers and, and, and all central banks are like that where they they purchase tons of gold right that the measure the unit of measure they use is tons when that happens are they buying from the miners directly and then sending it to their local um local mints that then minted into bars to be put aside in their version of the uh like uh fort knox they're they're buying it from their trusted refiners mm -hmm. from from trusted accredited refineries um, and, and then those are being sent off to wherever they want to store it. And then s some governments like the, the U.S. government will send some of it, you know, to New York, uh, to a COMEX vault. They'll send it to the U.S. Mint to mint Silver Eagles. Um, so th they're buying from accredited refiners. Mm, I see. Okay. While we're on the topic of central banks, this, it, this isn't exactly a central bank question, but, you know, the BRICS nations, um, Brazil, mm -hmm. Russia, India, China, and South America, mm -hmm. with a few other countries trying to join that, uh, that union, they put out a statement recently saying that they are working on a gold-backed global currency to kind of compete with the U.S. dollar. So on August 26th is when they're going to be having their meeting in, uh, I believe it's Cape Town, uh, South Africa, and that's when they're due to announce the, uh, this new currency that's supposedly going to be backed by gold. Do uh, you have any thoughts or opinions on that? Do you, what do you think? that's about and, and what do you think that'll do to the price you know it's certainly going to be a, a bit of a blow to the dollar you know if you can transact in a, a currency that's backed by gold that's that's a strong currency so that that's a blow to the dollar first and foremost and when you see that dollar pull back whether it's because of a recession money printing because of use of another currency it, it's very bullish for the price of gold mm. Uh, not to mention if they're having to buy up gold to back this currency, if it becomes wildly popular, you can imagine that, you know, demand for gold is up, dollar is down. So you have two two factors there uh, resulting in a very, very bullish, bullish sign for gold. Yeah, if, um, if let's say that that currency they're going to build, I mean, we have to, have, of course, we don't know the details of it, but let, let's just assume it's, it's actually going to be backed by currency, whether it's a ratio of one to one or, you know, five to one, whatever the ratio is, if they want to expand it, they can't just uh, do the same thing that the Fed does. They would have to actually buy up gold in order to issue more notes, That's right. right? That's right. That's oh, right. Interesting. So I didn't think of that. So actually, in that case, that would naturally drive the price up and it would create a floor at the same time. And the floor would, I, I would imagine, just continue rising because of that, because of that currency. That's that would right. be an interesting experiment. Yeah, yeah. Um, here's another question. This one actually came up uh, quite often in regards, to, well, when I asked our viewers and they, they wrote it back. Uh, this is the question. Well, this is the representative. Also, uh, is the price of gold and silver being artificially kept low due to the amount of paper metal versus the actual metal? Uh, and uh, another question, are gold prices or futures being manipulated to keep gold at a certain price? Uh, okay, so I, I guess that's sort of the same question. Yeah, no, that's it, a great question, and absolutely. Uh, look, there's there's many different ways that you can trade gold right now that don't involve physical gold whatsoever, uh, and because of that, you can create more gold that, than actually exists, right? You can create contracts, depending on what kind of funds you're in, what kind of ETFs you're in. Uh, a lot of those ETFs and funds don't actually own the physical gold, so they're trading gold uh, paper gold back and forth with a certain price, a fixed price, but there's no actual physical gold being transacted. So, or, or you know, moved from place to place. So, if you were to force their hand and say, "Hey, you're not able to trade gold until you're actually moving gold one to one," uh, you can imagine the price of gold is going to skyrocket. Skyrocket because there's going to be that much more demand from these funds and from these ETFs that actually have to then back whatever they're trading with a physical ounce of gold. So it is certainly being suppressed. Um, you see <clears throat> news stories uh, every couple months about banks being penalized uh, for spoofing, for suppressing the price of gold. Uh, probably the largest one in, in recent history was the JP Morgan uh, uh, spoofing that was being done. Uh, they were fined $920 million for that. Um, but you see those, those stories all the time. They're, it's certainly being suppressed. It's certainly uh, being held back and uh, again, it, I think if you're trading in gold, it should be backed by something, not just paper contracts. And uh, if we were ever to see that, I can't even speculate on what the price of gold would shoot to, but it would it would be uh, uh, to the upside times five, five, 10 X mm. at least. So you think it's being suppressed that much, like basically 500% suppression? Absolutely. <laughs>